you're under arrest. Masked battery with intent to bodily harm with a burglar mask on in a women's bathroom as a man. Were you wearing a mask? No, I had two rhinestones on my forehead. Makeup. They put me on a scary ass bus and sent me to Rikers Island. Were you in the men's jail? Men's. Yeah, I was in the men's prison. Honestly, though, that I survived Rikers. 5 a.m. This packed with the most important people you've ever seen on any magazine. Do it. So we're in a Paul's Dolls right now. My party I throw every Wednesday. There's a smell through my nose. Anyone who's anyone will say Linux held New York Nightlife on her back for COVID. Oh, girl. this is the girl who's super spreaded during COVID. Yeah. Has there ever been a situation where you've taken a step back and realized, okay, like I can hear Because sometimes critiques are good. You think you're marking territory with what you're doing oh, right now. I'm the number one girl. And that's why the bitches are mad. It's me, Linux. Like the girl. I think I'm here. Okay, I'm coming up to get you. Okay. Bye. Bye. Nice to Good meet you. you. Oh my god, I know. We're like about to be best friends. You smell amazing. It's a whole bunch of everything, girl. Oh, this is so nice. Right? It's good, right? <gasps> oh. Are we going? My... Yes. Hi. Always filming. Always filming. How are you? <laughs> Just don't let anyone know where I live. I, I know y'all been trying to kill my ass. You're like the first guy I've had in my bed, so. Really? Yeah, in a while. I'm very like not about that life. Are you celibate? I'm not celibate. It's just like, it takes a lot to like inspire me. I need to be like into it. I'm the same way. I need to feel a connection to someone in order to like want to hook up with them. Yeah. I mean, and I feel like I like am burnt out before I was like very in nightlife. I was a sex worker like before I was like making my money. So it was like I had the ads on Eros and TS for rent and it's like I needed $500. I'm like had no money rents due i'm scrolling through all these rent i mean people in the hotel so i'm very like this is like my temple i didn't know that right? about you i mean you gotta do what you gotta do i come from nothing my family has no money nothing it's like you come to new york and you gotta make it or you don't <laughs> I love the basement vibe. I, do I know a lot of people are like, okay, you live in a basement. It's like, no, this isn't LA. You know what I mean? No, I'm so into it. It's, it's like almost kind of, cozier. It's so kind of, no windows. Okay, wait, let me show. Well, there's windows. Don't worry, there's windows. Okay. <laughs> so you walk in, 5 a.m., this packed with the most important people you've ever seen on any magazine, doing till 8 a.m. So this is my glam room. I just built it. So this is like my little glam station. I have my little TV that I can watch when I'm glamming. This wall used to just be Balenciaga when they sent me all their clothes. And then when you glare, Casey, oh, I love you, Casey. Book me again. Um, <laughs> Casey sent me like all these clothes at New Glare. He's like, I mean, yeah. so this is all New Glare. Wow. And now the flavor of the era of the moment is Paco Rabanne. Thank you, Paco Rabanne. They just sent me their entire collection. And you get sent the stuff just like to wear it out and be seen in it. Oh yeah. That's basically what it is and for. And also people look to me to be like the precipice of New York City culture mm -hmm. and fashion. And that's like the underground. Mm -hmm. So brands be sending me sh being like, girl, like, like when they want to be cool. So like when Balenciaga first started the raver sh I got everything and I'm broke. Can you believe? It's so interesting because it's like, you're an influencer, but not by, I mean, you still have, you have a great following on Instagram, yeah. but it's like, you're an influencer in New York specifically. Like, yeah. And the brands, if they know, they know. Linux and Balenciaga, the New York nightlife underground person on Instagram, then it trickles down, or I guess it, it trickles up. Mm -hmm. And then it's like, then all the gays are wearing it. Mm -hmm. And then the mainstream, and then finally, it's now what it was last spring when it was every in LA with fascinating like like this is like this was given to me oh my god i'm just going in like these both these balenciaga bags were given to me from Love balenciaga it. like because it was like and they don't give press to people like all, i'm a, i'm i'm saying it new york nightlife's history all kind of started in the 1900s when there were the debutantes the richest of richest money girls they would turn 18 and they would have these debutante balls that was where society gathered and where shit happened and where culture was made and that was new york nightlife culture in the 1900s in the 70s that changed with warhol and studio 54. studio 54 was really the merging of the poor underground with the upper echelon of the debutante era. So that was where Grace Jones was walking by Candy Warhol, who was a little trans girl, and then 
mountains right there doing coke. 1954 happened for like a decade and Andy Warhol dies in the 80s. Then James St. James, Grace Jones, all these kids that were kind of there, they picked up the pieces from when Andy Warhol died and they created what they called the celebutants. That was a combination of the debutantes from the 1900s and celebrities and self-made celebrities as well. So then Michael Allard comes in in the 90s and he is like, okay, this ain't raunchy enough. I'm gonna bring in some shock or some gaggery and I'm gonna call us the club kids. We're the club kids, we make our own reality, we get famous how we wanna get famous and we embrace the capitalism and commercialism that has kind of taken over New York. In the thousands, everyone kind of took a nap because Michael Alec killed someone and everyone was like, I don't want to be called a club kid. I don't want to be about that. Everyone was chilling for a little bit. Then I cultivated my own generation that I'm the leader of. And it's called. And we don't have a name yet. You, they come up, they call it, they give us a name when we're put in magazines. I don't know. You think you're marking territory with, with what you're doing oh, right now. I'm the number one girl. And that's why the bitches are mad. When you think of New York nightlife, there's no one you think of besides me. It's me, Linux, like the girl. Well, then I came to that place because this, oh, is, yeah. this is exactly what I was looking for an episode for. No, when you picked me, I was like, okay, thank the Lord. Because so many people will sometimes do like little like whatever. And they come from out of town and they don't actually know what the vibe is. But like, no. She did good. This was the crowd of the first party I ever threw. Oh, wow. Yeah. So I make that the cover. Just like to always remember, bitch, bend that bitch, crowded as the voices in your head be like, you're nothing, you're a loser. Like you go on Instagram, see two bitches hanging out together that are you think are cooler than you, and you're like, oh my god, I lost it, I'm not cool anymore. But it's like, when you have this shit surrounding you, like 24 seven, and all that, like you're like, oh bitch, I got it. Does that scare you, like becoming irrelevant? That seems like it's a scare for you. E Do I talk about it a lot? No, no, not in a bad way. I'm just like, I'm in, I just, you know, I just feel like Yeah, I mean, isn't it scary for everyone? I mean, it's, if, yeah, I mean, I don't like to focus too much on my fears because then, like, they, like, become a reality, you mm -hmm. know? But, like, definitely, yeah. It's, like, I mean, because parties are all about, like, the coolest thing happening in that city, that event that's going to bring everyone there. So if you're not the coolest, most clout hype thing happening in the city, there's four other places that they're going to go choose over you. It's competitive. Very. Girl. The nightlife politics, but I love it. How long did it take for you to really become who you are today? It started during COVID when I looked around and I saw my community drifting in so many separate directions. This bitch that I used to look up to is depressed as f These people don't have money and they're getting evicted out of their house. These people don't know where to go. Like, so I was like, you know what? Everyone come to my house. We're gonna remember who the f we are. You know? So COVID was almost like a loophole because nobody else was throwing parties. Yeah. So you were kind of like, I'll be the controversial one and throw so parties. Scammer. Yeah, for so, sure. So that, that would be your chance to shine. Yeah, it's like kind of messy. I never thought about that way, but yeah, for sure. <laughs> I mean, I appreciate your honesty. It's interesting to talk about. Yeah, no, it's like, I mean, it's true. Anyone who's anyone who's anyone will say, they've said it multiple times, Linux held New York Nightlife on her back for COVID, during COVID. Your COVID experience was so much different than my COVID experience. Oh, it's- I was locked in an apartment. I know, but- So scared of getting COVID. But no, I'm not- Were you vaccinated? Yeah, yeah, like, and once, I, once I got vaccinated, I was able to breathe. Yeah, for sure, but like- You were actually scared? Before vaccination, terrified. Because I just like thought of like, I could not stop thinking about like, the heaviness of the not being able to breathe. That would give me so much anxiety. Oh, you're like scared of dying and stuff. I was at that time, yeah. I'm were not. you not? No, I'm not. When you're, like, depressed, you, like, aren't, like... When you've lived the life I've lived, it's, like, death is, like, when you finally are sleeping. You know what I mean? Did you ever get COVID? Um, yeah, I'm sure. But you, you never had, like, a serious illness of it? No. I don't... I mean, I don't... I don't know. I'm not very, like... I don't get, like, sick, I feel like. Well, yeah, but COVID... My perspective of things is, like, not real. I live in like a fantasy world where like it's like, like look at us right now. You know what I mean? It's like not, if I'm sick, I keep it pumping. When I go on your Instagram and I read comments. Girl. Oh, this is the girl who's super spread it during COVID. Yeah. Has there ever been a situation where you've taken a step back and realized, okay, like I can hear, because sometimes critiques are good. And 100%. I believe in karma and I believe when you die, God sits you down and says, this is what you did wrong. This is what you did right. This is who you negatively affected. This is who you hurt. And you have to pay 
for the you have to balance the karma that you cause. I think that what bothers people maybe is that it looks like I get away with everything. To them, they don't see a struggling trans woman living in a basement in Bushwick whose sole goal is to make people happy and throw parties. They see a blonde bitch in designer that gets away with everything and the rules don't apply to her. Mm -hmm. That's what makes people mad. And so the only thing I guess I could do differently is try to share my truth a little more and kind of be like, I am two steps away from the girl in the encampment down the block. So I was secretly on Ozempic, working out every day, eating probably like four to 500 calories a day, like losing weight boots. I got really skinny in like July. How do you have energy or anything? Were you losing your hair? Uh, no. Because you don't have any nutrients. I mean, no, you have, I'm eating healthy still. 400 calories. You have medicine, you have medicine. I have like a little like meal plan thing where it's like, I was keto, like, it, but I'm, I'm making sure I'm having my protein. I'm having the vegetables I need. I'm taking medicine. I'm taking supplements. Like wow. I used to be crazier. I'm not as crazy now, but wow. so, but in the peak of it, I then get a call from my agency being like, Equinox wants you to be the face of their new campaign. And I'm like, that's so dark because it's like when I'm the most like pushing it like my body and shit like that's when I'm in every Equinox gym all over the country because you're assigned to a modeling agency right yeah are you getting booked as your name or are you getting booked as a model oh I'm talent so there's a talent board and a model board I'm talent which means you book Linux, knowing you're booking Linux, mm -hmm. you know? Okay, you want vodka? Yeah, let's do it. Period. Look, it's so funny. This just got sent to me. Wow. Like three hours ago. <laughs> this is what people do, like all day long. And it lights up and everything. I am working a party on New Year's Eve in Miami. I walk in, I'm not even drunk. It's, I think like 2 a.m. Go to the bathroom, I get attacked immediately. Cause there's some girls mad that I'm trans, right? The girl attacked me, and I defended myself as I possibly could. I don't know, I was just there. I was so in shock that it was happening and kind of really traumatized that I was like, oh my God, I'm being attacked in women's bathroom. Security is like, you can leave. Don't worry, you can leave. We all leave. Two years go by. Put a pin in that. I then am at a party on Christmas Eve. I have no family, and I'm doing Christmas Eve, and I have my new Chanel bag that I got off Canal Street. It was my big purchase, $60 for a fake Chanel purse. And I was like, oh my God, I'm designer now. I go to this party, right? I go to the bathroom. This guy sweeps in really quick, locks the door behind me and rapes me on Christmas Eve. On Christmas Eve. So he rapes me and he takes my Chanel bag. He takes everything, rapes me, comes inside me, leaves. Oh my God. It was like four pumps. So it was like, you know what I mean? So You're I, saying it so casually. Oh my gosh, it's like so intense. This is my life. My life is like, it's, you you learn after like the 15th crazy fucking shit that happens to you, you kind of just are like, it's the plot. I then go to the ER, I get a kit, I get all these tests done, I do a police report because my ID is stolen and it was my new ID, like my woman's ID. So I was like, I need the ID, I'm about to leave on a trip, I need the ID and you have to do a police report for all stolen objects. We go home, I heal, I live my life, I then get a phone call the following September, it should be 2016 or 2017, I get a phone call. Hi, we have your Chanel purse and your ID. We found the guy who raped you on Christmas Eve. Please meet us at the Starbucks on Delancey and Christy. I get there. I'm so happy I'm getting the Chanel bag. And also it felt like the closing of the raping situation. So I was like, oh my God, it's over. So then I go there. He's like, yeah, we just got to go to the station because all the stuff's at the station. I get there. We sit down. You're under arrest. I'm like, for what? They said masked battery with intent to bodily harm with a burglar mask on in a women's bathroom as a man. Were you wearing a mask? No, I had two rhinestones on my forehead, makeup. It was, they had to, but they had to blow up the charge because it was in Florida. And in order to get someone out of New York, you have to blow up the charge to make it like a triple felony. Right? That is like a nightmare. Um, nightmare. They handcuffed me. I'm like, what? What are you talking about? They're like, New Year's Eve, Miami. And I'm like, oh my God. The night the bitch attacked me in a bathroom and they told me I could leave. New Year's Eve, Miami. To use your, as a way to get you there yeah. is so messed up. So messed up. Like it's up. They immediately lock me up. 
they take my phone, I have no phone numbers or anything, and they put me on a fucking scary ass bus and sent me to Rikers Island. Were you in the men's jail? Men's, yeah, I was in the men's prison. Also, they spelled my name wrong when during intake and they spelled it Lennox, L-E-N-O-X, Wilkerson, which that's my last name is Wilkinson. And they said my birthday was 1987. So no one could even find me, even if someone was like, oh, did this bitch go, you know when you're like, my friend's not well, let me check the hospital databases because you're like being kooky. Like, you couldn't even find me. Why wouldn't you just go to like a county jail? I'm confused. Because the jails, they overfill. And so Rikers is where you go when the other jails are full. Honestly, though, that I survived Rikers. I finally get housed. They put me in Q2L. Anyone who was trans or anyone who was detoxing from or drugs or or something. Great combo, right? I walk in and they put me in. It was like 9 p.m. They put me in. My bed didn't have a mattress, but oh, the person who delivers the mattresses, she doesn't come until Monday. So you have no mattress. You're sleeping on iron for the next four days. I was so alone. I was so alone. And I was like, wow, I'm, I'm here forever. I was there for nine full days. Finally, honestly, Kyle, my ex-boyfriend, I know we went down some weird place. Thank you so much for getting me the out of there girl so he figured it all out on the outside so the whole thing was i either had to pay two hundred thousand dollars of a bail cash with and put a house on like a house that also is worth two hundred thousand dollars on the bail to get out otherwise i would have to wait 28 days for them to extradite me so you waited the 28 days or what no so i my friends on the outside raised two hundred thousand dollars for me yeah and like yeah I don't think she really wants people to know that she, like, be part of it, but... Why? That's such a, like, amazing thing for her to do. People are evil on the internet, and, like, also, I don't want people... I don't think... Our friendship is so pure and real. I don't want people to think that Linux is friends with a rich girl <laughs> and got her out of jail. During all the trauma, though, I was writing it all on toilet paper because I was like, oh, my God, this is, like, a movie. I have to write this all down, like, because I could turn this into a movie. Smart and get famous from it. I have all this shit written. It was an entire roll of toilet paper. So I called Justin Moran, who's the, who was the editor, who is still the editor-in-chief at Paper Magazine. I think he was just working there, but they were like, this is incredible. We want to publish it. Like, please, like, give it to us, transcribe it, write it all, send it to us. And I sent it the next day. It was published. I remember after years would go by, they, people would come up to me like, oh my God, your writing is so incredible. You're such a storyteller. Like, you're this is incredible. Like you need to keep doing this. But in my head, I was like, I want to keep writing, but I don't want to, I don't want to be about negative, sad stuff. I don't want to endure trauma in order to give people a story, you know? So I was like, okay, what do I know? What is good about my life? Nightlife, throwing parties, going to parties, all these people that do nightlife, that is what is positive to me in life. So I'm going to write about that. Mm -hmm. And that was the birth of my nightlife column at Paper Magazine, which has now turned into... I think we're at almost three years. Car's here. Okay, so where are we heading? So we're going to Paul's Dolls right now. My party I throw every Wednesday at Paul's Casablanca. I was the only person to ever do an all trans party. Really? Yeah, like a cool person. Like, so trans, like, doll parties have been happening since, like, obviously since, like, the 70s. Like, since it was, like, sex work, you know? Yeah. But I'm the first person to ever throw an all doll party that isn't dependent on sex work. Does that make sense? Totally. It's a party for trans girls and about trans girls and with trans girls about celebrating just the fact that we're all trans girls. And do you employ do you employ all trans girls too? Yeah. So all the DJs, all the hosts, everyone are all trans girls. All dolls. Paul's yeah. dolls, honey. And it's called Paul's Dolls because it's at a club, Paul's Casablanca, owned by Paul Sevigny, who is Chloe Sevigny's brother. I was gonna ask. Yeah. Chloe Sevigny's brother, Paul, and he's you know, you gotta know what you gotta do to like get men to do your thing. You know what I mean? So it's like, let me stroke his ego a little bit, and I'm like, okay, I can. If it's called Paul's Casablanca, his other club is called Paul's Baby Grand. Then I'm like, okay, let me just call the party Paul's Dolls, and he'll love the idea. Paul's Dolls has the ring to it too. Yeah, Paul, it rhymes. I'm like, let me just do Paul's Dolls. It'll be, it'll be a hit. Hello. Hello. Hey, hey. Hi. Is that my bestie? Mama. How are you? Hi. Sorry, I took so long. Um. Mama. 
Yeah, better be script. I had to look as good as you. Girl. I'm Matt. Hi. Nice to meet Wait, you, Matt. Hi, Matt. Nice yeah. to meet you. I'm like, Wait, are phone. you ready for a big night? Oh my god, hi. Oh, yeah. hi. Okay, Laura <laughs> looks sporty. I don't have it. Hold She's on. Sporty, looks, athletic girl. She looks straight, Let's like, in her balance. Winter Olympics. Yeah. Yeah. Stop. Winter All Olympics. Stars. So you said you grew up in Wisconsin, right? Yeah, I grew up in Wisconsin. And how many siblings do you have? Oh my god, it's tricky. My Oh my god, but we're here, right? So, um, so I was born in North Carolina. Eight months in, I moved to Wisconsin. My mom and my dad were not together when they had me, so it was like separate vibes. But so then my dad married this girl who was like my stepmom, and through her I got a bunch of step siblings. So you grew up with your dad? I grew up with my dad because he my mom was my mom's kind of like a party girl. She thought that it would be better for me to be with my dad. He had the money to put me in private school, like Lutheran school when I was a kid, and he had a new wife and they had siblings for me. So Instead of being with my single mom, it was giving like, oh, this will give her like the childhood, the normal like picket fence vibes that she needs. I was put in a situation growing up where it was supposed to be perfect, perfect, perfect. And it was actually the most awful. It was a nightmare season for American Horror Story. I remember our big blowout that is like traumatized me was we were in, I can see it now, like the hallway of our house. Like, and he was like, you're a fucking f are you? I remember this so vividly. I said, this freshman year of high school, my dad has full cancer, by the way, has a colonoscopy bed. He's like about to die any day. I was like, so what if I'm a f Why do you hate gay people so much? Like, I don't know what it is, but like, why are you so fucking obsessed with how much you hate gay people? He then took the top of my head right here, pulled me to our marble countertop, slammed my face onto the countertop, gave me a concussion, and screamed in my ear saying, no child of mine is going to be a fucking fat. No child of mine is going to swish your hips through the high school the way I see you doing and get away with that. No son of mine is going to do that. And I was, oh my God, I don't want to cry. 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 I don't You're okay. You're okay. I not cry on this fucking video. That was the moment that like, it was like, it clicked in my head. I was like, this is not this is not what I deserve. I am now in a survival mode. I need to get the f out of here. I called my mom, who was living maybe two hours away, and I said, Mom, please don't ask any questions. I got crazy. He beat the f out of me. He's beating the f out of me every day. Please come get me. She said, I'm on my way. I'm an hour away. Pack a suitcase, throw it out the back window, because she knew the house that I lived in. Throw, throw it out the back window. We'll pick it up from the woods where the backyard is, where we were living, and I'll get you, and you don't ever have to look back. And I threw, I packed a suitcase, I threw it out the window, and she was like, there, she's like, I'm at the end of the block. Just sneak out the front. I snuck out, took the suitcase, rolled it through the woods, and I got in my mom's car, and I never looked back. And my mom saved, she saved my life. Wow. Yeah. It was through that that I realized that I like was in a normal place. Parents don't beat the shit out of you because you're expressing yourself and it's not hurting anyone. I'm not alone on those experiences as a kid. Every single person at every club I've ever gone to and every party I've ever thrown, all I see is a crowd of people that also had those experiences and they're out and they just want to have fucking fun. Or they finally, oh my, I'm getting emotional again. They're, they finally made it to the place. You know, when I'm throwing a party of a thousand people, it's not just a thousand fabulous people. This is like a thousand little kids that probably went through the same, if not worse, as I did. And they overcame it and they grew up and now they're out and they just want to release their demons on the dance floor and they want to finally enjoy life. Oh my God, I'm being so emotional. But like, you know what I mean? I love hearing that. Like I love hearing your true purpose behind what you do and, and how that makes you feel. It's It makes it seem so much more than just like glitz and the glam of the parties. It's so much more. I forget that people don't know where I came from. You know, so I, when I'm, oh, the Paco Rabanne collection got sent to me. That's me being like, yeah, from where I came from. Now I'm up in New York getting the Paco Rabanne collection sent to me. You know what I mean? I'm proud of you. Like, thank you. I'm proud of me too. I think I'm proud of you too. But yeah, I'm very, I like, I am like the epitome of like survivor. You're like a strong woman. Yeah, strong, strong, big old busty woman. <laughs>
<laughs> yeah, okay. you're, you're busty, all right. Yes. I'm trying to be, you know what I mean? Hello, how are you? Ah, my man. Good to see you. I suppose. Shut Wait, up. you're out here? Where are the girls? Oh, you oh, smell no. so good. I haven't had a cigarette in so long. <laughs> That's making me so horny. <laughs> Wait, what kind is it? It's for you. No, I just smell through my nose. I just put gum in. I can't. <laughs> Hi, how are you? Are you in charge? No, Will's in charge. Ugh, oh, I'm gosh. always in charge, but Will's here. Okay, let's do that. <laughs>